Oi shout out dego kay Cool Ninja TV dia. Shout out kay Cool Ninja TV in my friend. Shout out po kay Cool Ninja TV. Thank you. Few things in sports are better than a homegrown world champion carrying the pride of his people. As the large entourage comes right undefeated. reception for Crawford he loves these Nebraska so for only the fourth time in modern history of boxing a fight to be an undisputed champion with four belts for the official introductions here's Lupe Contreras and now Lincoln Nebraska this is the main event of the evening Two undefeated world champion. One goes home with all the belts, and one is gonna take an L tonight. Presenting first, fighting out of the blue corner, promoted in association with Matchroom Boxing, wearing blue with silver trim. He weighed in at an official 139 pounds. This perennial road warrior has yet to taste defeat as a pro with 22 victories. 12 of those victories coming by way of KO. Defending his WBA and IBF Junior Welterweight Championships. From Win Hope, Namibia, the Blue Machine, Julius Indongo. Across the ring of the red corner, wearing silver, with white and blue trim, he weighed in at the 140-pound limit. Started from the bottom now. He enters the ring an undefeated world champion with 31 victories. 22 of those victories coming by way of KO. Universally recognized as pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. Defending his WBO and WBC junior welterweight titles. Born, bred, and ripped in Omaha, Nebraska. Terrence Burkhoffer. Right now, the belts are good if they come up on them and let them work in here. I gave you both instructions. I just want to remind you, listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck to both of you. Joe Tessitore, Teddy Atlas, and the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Andre Ward, with the call here ringside. Indongo, Crawford, all four belts, junior welterweight championship. Let's get after it. This is the first fight for Ndongo in the United States. All but two of his fights in Africa. Heck of a way Ready? to welcome somebody to the country by giving them the third best fighter in the world, at least in my estimation. I think Ndongo's up for the challenge. Southpaw against the Southpaw. Crawford is listed as an orthodox fighter, but when he fights lefties, well, different ways to handle it. Some people get their lead left foot outside the lead right foot of a southpaw from the orthodox position, not Crawford. Fight fire with fire, very comfortable going southpaw. That's where he is right now. What will be apparent, apparent early is in Dongo, he's straightforward and he's straight backwards. He's consistent. That's who's going to be the whole fight. Crawford's got more tools in the toolbox. You'll see more lateral movement, switching from right to left. So just look forward to that as this fight continues to progress. A good looking counter left hand from Crawford as Ndongo lunged in. One other thing that Crawford is that you missed, he's faster, quicker hands. He buzzed Ndongo with that straight left, got his attention right away. So you know, skilled his bud. As we said on camera, setting this up, and to your point, 
Crawford is more dimensional, more versatile. He can do more things. One dimension of Ndongo. And it all is about that left hand, the power hand, the backhand for the southpaw. Crawford, one of the best switch hitters in the game, can do it either way. Comes out, as Teddy said, he's going to meet fire with fire and be in that southpaw stance. But he is equal power no matter which stance he's in. And Dango to me right now just looks a little tight, a little tighter than he was in his first two fights on the road, fighting and, and defending his belt. Remember, he won his first world title with a first round knockout. And Dango is undefeated, but not undented. He's been on the floor twice in his career. But Crawford has never been knocked down. Of course, as a pro, but nor as an amateur after his successful run, a two division world champion. You know, we talk about all these talents, all these abilities. Who's got the physical strength? Who has the size, the length, the speed? All those things. But one thing that shouldn't be missed that I think favors Crawford the intellect. He's smarter inside that squared circle. And Crawford is finding out that Ndago probably needs to be a little smarter lunging in there. Some opportunities existed there in the first round for Crawford. Had that opening left hand. And then an exchange moments ago. End of one here for all four titles. We talked about earlier about Crawford having more dimensions. Well, you see right here some of those dimensions. You can set traps. Take a little step back, get in Dango to reach a little bit, give up his height, and counter with that right hook from the southpaw position. One of nine punches he connected with, according to CompuBox, in that first round. With Dango, you worried about the jab, the setup punch, and the power punch, the left hand. But Crawford, more tools in that toolbox. You have to worry about the left hand, the jab, and the right hook. And again, a very dangerous punch for Southpaw. This is up close, and it comes from a place where your peripheral just doesn't pick it up sometimes. So many ways to deal with a tall guy, Andre. You know, the conventional way, you can walk in, move your head, bring your feet, come behind your jab, and get close. Another way, the way that Crawford did early with that replay, you saw it, step back set a trap entice the taller guy to give up his height to come to you to become short to become small he enticed him to reach he made him pay he disciplined him and on paper it's a three inch height advantage there's a swinging swiping left hand from Ndongo Crawford gets right back into the kitchen and the crowd reacts Pass a hand for Crawford. No doubt about it. And more explosive. The power's there for Ndongo. Don't get me wrong. But it's wider power. It's blunt power. The sharper power. The more concise punches. Crawford. And I think just overall, Crawford is just more settled. And when you're settled as a fighter, you can think better. You can implement your game plan better. And you'll see the shots that you need to land. Good shot from Crawford right there. But Ndongo's still just a little tight for my taste. And then on the back end, a right hand to the body.
Take a look at the knockdown right here. Right hand to the body. You're going to see the left hand coming up right there behind the ear. And Mama's happy. Crawford is so accurate with those power punches. We told you landing 48% of them, fifth highest in boxing, according to CompuBox. Andre, that left hand didn't land on the chin, but behind the ear. That can stay with you. That can discombobulate your equilibrium. Yeah, to the people at home, it didn't look like much, but it was a lot. It threw off his equilibrium, and he was hurt for the remainder of that round. And he might still be a little hurt right now. You see tonight that power punch percentage is already at 57 percent. I talked about it in the fight plan. How does Crawford deal with southpaws? Just becomes one, a pretty damn good one. When we mentioned it earlier, Teddy. You know, whether it's orthodox or southpaw, he has the ability to put you on your seat. The skill, the power, the speed, total package is Crawford. And even though Ndongo is a two-time world champion, this is the best opponent and the best fighter that he's faced in his career. Not the case for Crawford. Crawford has a long list of quality opposition that's prepared him for this moment right now. Dango still looking a little unsure about what he wants to do offensively. Left the uppercut tried to split the guard, and Dango came forward that time. But you can see some doubt, to your point, Andre. He is fat with those left hands, Teddy. There is opportunity throughout the night. Yeah, you can handle those fat punches if you're caught in two different ways. Punch in between them. Call Ninja TV, thanks. Call Ninja TV, hello po, thanks po.